G'day folks, I just thought I'd do a little bit of a uh, autopsy video on this Dakin Industries DC compressor. Originally I was just going to throw it out but the more I look at the uh, compressor head the more I realise it's a bit different to the other ones. Um, the main thing is that I've noticed is that the outer housing seems to be the high pressure side, not the uh, low pressure side in the case of say a Copeland scroll like this one here. Normally the high pressure side would be up here isolated by this seal and all this casing would be low pressure. In this case we have high pressure coming out of the centre here with a series of reed valves for staging the discharge and probably smoothing it out. But there's a passage going straight down here and down through here. You can see the little passageways are drilled through where I've cut. That slits from the grinder but underneath you can see where it comes out into the motor housing through this baffle. So it seems that the outer housing is the uh, high pressure side with the high pressure output there. There is a return line which I've sheared off here that was attached to the cylinder head plate on there. That goes to that and that came from a solenoid valve attached to the discharge accumulator. So I'm guessing that's oil return. It's a little piston with a piston ring on it and you can see the top of the moving scroll in there. So it's dumping oil back via a solenoid valve. I mean, this thing's really designed to return lubrication forcibly. And that's the head plate off it too. So this out outside surface and the outside of, oh, sorry, the um, outside of the housing is all high pressure. Either that or it's isolated partially because this area here should really be um, it should really be uh, low pressure. So the top part of this casing would be low pressure actually. Yeah, this side would be low pressure, and down through the bottom will be high pressure because this is pressed in. There's, these slots and cuts aren't normally there. That's just my grinding work. So this pressed in surface bears against the housing. You can see they've machined a step on it on a lathe. So. Okay, it makes sense now. High pressures underneath, low pressures on top. It's the exact opposite of most other manufacturers that I've seen. So yeah, low pressure on top. That's your low pressure in from here. That's what that was. That feeds directly into there. That is spring loaded, but it's stuck because it's got crap underneath it and grinding dust. But that's a little spring loaded plunger valve. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting. Actually, I should say it's a check valve. Because once the uh, extension of that piece that I cut off is sitting down inside that hole, once that valve comes up, it will check the flow. So once the compressor stops, you don't get gas flooding back to the back to the low pressure side. So that's a check valve. It's just stuck. Normally, it's supposed to spring up and sit flush with the top of this housing at maximum extension. Let's pull the top of this thing off anyway and just have a bit more of a look. The compressor's made in Thailand too, by Dakin Industries. And that's the rotor. Permanent magnet, that's the bottom of it. The top. Very strong magnets inside it. You can see the eccentric lobe. It's one incredible strong magnet. Can't pull it off like that. Two hand job. I might even cut these pins off and see if I can separate it because you can see the neodymium magnets laminated inside it. They are very strong magnets. Okay well it's definitely uh, low side on the top and high side on the bottom uh, evident by the isolation tube there for the high side oil return and the fact that the scroll intakes right here on this part of the housing. So this bottom part the fixed, fixed housing will be pressed in place then the moving scroll is placed in with the fixed scroll and it's bolted down as one assembly. Or well, they bolt it together and just press the entire assembly in. So yeah, that's about how they go together. Um, that's the stator I found. I'm not going to burn it out because I cut it with the grinder. It's all short anyway. I'm just going to cut the end off it and go from there. You can see it's got very fine poles on it. Um, it's three phase DC or AC. I uh, couldn't get it to run on the VFD, I did try, that's why there's all these little swirly marks on here, it had dirt and crap in it. 
and it tried to, it started reversing sporadically and then stalled the VFD, the VFD went out on overload. But apparently I can actually change the voltage hertz, or vol voltage and frequency hertz um, ratio and actually make them run. So look at that in the future too. I've got a couple of DC compressors floating around and maybe even smart drive Fisher Pike or washing machine motors because they are, they're actually a sensor type BLDC. They have three hall sensors on them but it might be possible to spin them up or even over rev them with a VFD and chuck something heavy into it like a whole compressor or something and just see what the washing machine does. That'd be quite fun. Try and trash a top load Fisher Pike or smart drive. So that's about all for now. That is the uh, Dakin Industries tie made compressor and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.